you know, one of the difficult things about life is, um, is finding the right path. It's okay being efficient at what we do, but what if what we're doing is not what we should be doing or we feel like we're missing out in life some way? I remember a man called Stephen Covey. Um, he wrote about this years ago um, and he made a, an interesting point and it's one that I've been making myself with people for some time. It might be worth touching upon this today. Um, Stephen Covey used to teach people how to manage their time and their jobs really well. So we made them really efficient with their little schedules and keeping up with this and keeping up with that. Made them very time, time efficient. But one of the things he noticed over the years was um, sometimes a person has done really well and become very efficient, but then realised, well, probably when it was too late in life, that the ladder of their life is leaning on the wrong wall. You know, they should have maybe have, been, have gone that, this way and life did something else entirely. And so what he suggested was not just having a ladder in life, but also a compass, a compass so we know which way to go. But that's a tricky bit, isn't it, really? I mean, how do we know which way to go? You know, our parents quite often have big ideas about what we should do. Uh, teachers in schools, um, in my opinion, we're often forced to choose the pathway uh, far too early. And, um, and also, because we're creatures of habit, it's, we, we have reluctant to change direction as we go along the way. But I think it's very important to be willing to change your direction. But the one thing I'd like to mention about the compass, um, I think we all know these days how to become efficient and how to get good at what we do and train properly and all this. It's become part of our jobs, part of what we want to do more readily. Um, but the difficult part to me is the compass. Now, I used to be a mountaineer. I used to take people across the mountains and I used to teach people navigation and things like that. And the one piece of kit that we carried was the compass that was the thing that was alive if you know what I mean so but what, one of the interesting things as we did this there might be like three or four of us going across um, pretty featureless terrain in the mountains so there was no like junctions or rivers or anything it was just all mountain and that was it so you had to be pretty good at what you were doing and um, sometimes we'd stop halfway through the trip and um, we'd be having a little drink and having a bite to eat, freshen ourselves up a minute. And then somebody might say, well, to me, would you take us to the next part of the journey? And I'd say, okay. And they'd say, get a map out and say, right, we're here now. I want you to take us there, you know. And this is the funny thing about it. As I put my compass on the map and, and lined up the grid lines, okay, which is what you do, you line, get everything lined up. And then the, the compass, to get the compass lined up with that, you have to turn it until it's all lined up. And it was really strange how you've always had this feeling about where the next part was. Okay, this feeling of, you know, you, you almost stand looking at a certain direction with your map. And the hard thing was, is when you set the compass, you then find yourself, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not there, you know. And this is a very difficult thing to overcome, is overcoming your instinct. And, uh, and then you think, oh, my God, hang on a minute. And, and to get lined up with the compass completely, you'd realise, my God, you know, this is the, the real right directions is a lot different than I thought. It's, it's what you might call non-intuitive. And I think it's good to know that. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think sometimes to find the right way, we have to be open. To something different than we really thought. Sometimes we keep looking, like facing, like I did on the mountain. You're facing this way. You keep facing certain things because that's the way you want to go. But if you were to make some more accurate inquiry, talk to more people, um, maybe go on a retreat somewhere, tell somebody what's really going on inside of you, the sort of dreams you had as a child, even. You might find you've been looking in the wrong direction, see? Wondering why it's not really worked out, wondering why life's not terribly satisfying. Maybe your direction is different than anyone ever thought. Maybe different than what you ever thought. 
it's only a small little idea, it's a small little thought that I'm sharing with you on this occasion. But if you think about it, some people become very successful, uh, very efficient, and people admire them. But all the time, the ladder of their life is leaning on the wrong wall. And in a way, they knew this. And it's sad, really, isn't it? It's sad. They get all these years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years into something, of being working in an office, and all the time, all you ever wanted to do was be a plumber, or a fisherman, or a window cleaner, you know? And even though you get paid less for being a window cleaner than you do possibly working in an office, you might have been a lot more happy and content and able to give more to other people by being a window cleaner. 